is our sixth one we are hosting and we're super excited to connect with everyone today um, to make this nutritious, yummy meal. So to start, we have our two guests here, Craig and Giada, did I say that right? Yeah. Okay. Cool, awesome. Um, Craig is a co-founder of his Life by Design business. Um, it's called Craig and Jenny D, where they guide highly accomplished individuals and companies to amplify their results by redefining success from a holistic perspective. They're also co-founders of Fusion Performance Institute and Retreats Reimagined. They give people empowerment on how to show up as your best self in your life, business, and family. And a huge part of that is taking control of what you eat. Um, additionally, we have my friend Jessica here, who has also been on our previous cooking shows. Jessica is an athlete, a lifestyle entrepreneur, a biohacker, and a running coach. She's passionate about educating others on ways to make healthy meals fun and delicious while getting the best nutrition for a healthy life. She loves working with Eats to make cooking fun, keeping it simple, and finding creative ways to use what you have in your kitchen. So I'm super excited to have you all today um, with Eats. And I'm going to do a few housekeeping items before we get started. Um, I'm going to post a link to the recipe in the chat box. I'm gonna do that right now so everyone can make this in their homes. Oops, it didn't post as the link, it just posted as recipe. I'll try it one more time. Oh. Okay, I think it should be in there. Maybe not. Okay, now the recipe is in there. Um, and so I also will be posting a little five minute question survey at the end to gauge interest. Interest, Like if you liked this course, if you wanna um, see more things like this through Eats, this is super new for us, so we're always trying to get good feedback. Um, so to start, everyone is going to wash our hands. And we're going to make sure that, well not we're going to make sure, we're going to try to do this longer than we think we should. Um, and make sure you scrub between your fingers super well. So I'm going to pop off the camera real quick and do that also. And Gianna, she's actually gonna pull up her hair too. And my hair is actually getting so long that I might have to pull up my hair. <laughs> I should do that too. I don't know about you guys, but when I got my first hair appointment next week, I was so excited. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I trimmed my own hair the other day. So that oh, was fun. Oh, that's bold. That's impressive. I couldn't figure out how to do the back on my own. <laughs> yeah, that was, that's the struggle. It's a little bit uneven, but the curliness kind of, you can't really tell when it's so curly. Um, so also today, I just wanted to share a little document I made. Um, about what to focus on if you're trying to save money while shopping at the grocery store. Um, so there are certain foods in the grocery store that you should try to purchase over others that save a lot of money. And then there's other foods that um, aren't necessarily as nutritious, but still have um, really good benefits to them. So I'm just gonna pull this document up and share my screen. Okay, can everyone see my screen? Cool, okay. So there's just a few bullet points I wanted to go over. Um, these are things that I found super helpful. And uh, also it's like a good visual to see how much money you could save by purchasing certain things. So there is, this one is, first one is spinach. Um, I actually, thought of this first to think of like, wow, why don't we just buy like loose leaf spinach? Um, and I did a little more research and I found that conventional spinach, the loose leaf that you find in the produce section um, that you need to buy yourself, that holds more pesticides per weight than any other vegetable according to USDA. 
Um, so I thought that was a super interesting study. And it also linked those insecticides to neurological effects in children. Um, and you can kind of see the price difference here with 149 to 349. I, I, I personally was buying conventional spinach for a while. And I was like, this is a great way to save money because I go through it so fast. Um, but after reading the study, which is linked here, if anyone wants to see it, um, I definitely like changed my perspective on it. But yeah, that was just a super interesting thing I found today. Um, also, purchasing in bulk is a really good way to shop well on a budget. And also, if you eat a lot of whole foods, um, purchasing in bulk could help you save up to Thirty-six fifty a year if you're saving even as little as ten cents on something. So, for example, like buying the large packet of rolled oats instead of like the individual packets. Um, and then also, you can save money by purchasing seasonal food. Um, some things in season right now are asparagus and Swiss chard. Depending on your location, of course. I know a lot of you are from Pennsylvania. And what is in Pennsylvania? What's um, it's in season in Pennsylvania right now. Does anyone know? I don't know, as a matter of fact, uh, because I'm actually waiting for the farmers market to open up. And once they do, that's a, I find that as an organic and a low cost way of buying vegetables. Definitely. Farmer, yeah, it, it is so wonderful. And that leads me to um, the last point of signing up for a CSA. Um, it's all sourced from CSA stands for Community Supported Agriculture. And all of the produce you get from a CSA is fresh, local, seasonal, and it is less if, if not just the same price as going to a grocery store. And you get to make a super awesome connection with your farmer, which is great. Um, I'll post a link to this site that allows you to search for a CSA near you or any local farms that you can um, call and order produce from. So you just simply put in your zip code and I'll put that in the chat box. Um, and then additionally, knowing the Clean 15, which is um, the number of least pesticide ridden vegetables. So if buying organic is not affordable for you, there are a number of produces that are totally fine to buy non-organic and those are listed here. Um, so yeah, those are just a few things that I found on tips on how to save money during this crazy time. And I will definitely post a link to that CSA in the chat box. So cool. That was all I had for my little lesson today. So thank you all for listening. Um, now I'm going to turn it over to Craig to start making the cauliflower soup. Now we unmute that, we get the video, and awesome. There you go. Man, those, those, those were, first of all, some great tips. Um, you know, I love, every time I, I learn something new, I mean, every time I'm listening, I just encourage everybody to be a student and just to bring it all in because it's really amazing. Uh, the fuel that you put in your body is so important and if you can get good it, the best way to do is to go organic if you can and, it, and that's where i said farmers markets will work out really really well uh that's a we've got a local one that we go to uh and you know and what we're going to be cooking today is very healthy stuff uh extremely healthy and actually if you're looking at a budget it's going to be low cost on a budget so it's going to help everybody out uh, and it's a good way because whenever you are uh, soup is a great way to make a big batch of it and then you can either freeze it uh, in smaller containers or uh, you, and you can just have it throughout the week and we're going to show you how to exact how to go about doing that I mean, we've got some really really cool tips on how to make this vegan cauliflower soup uh, last all week long and taste different every single day all right so I've got my wonderful sous chef here, Gianna. All right, so awesome. There you go. Thanks. You're cool. Uh, so what we've got here is I'm going to show you a few things. Let me go down here, and we've got. Uh, let's see. We're going to have some onions I've already chopped up. Uh, we've got some fresh garlic. We've got some 
virgin coconut oil. And we also have some raw cashews. And we also have, of course, with cauliflower soup, we need cauliflower, that always helps. And then we also have a nut milk. And you can get any nut milk that you want. I mean, it can be almond, it can be soy, but I mean, any type of nut milk that you would like. Uh, there you go. Bingo, hemp milk, perfect. I mean, any type of milk. And then we also have some uh, vegetable broth. And for some reason, if you say, hey, listen, I'm not vegan, I don't need to be vegan, that's perfectly fine. You can always use some chicken broth and that'll work out just fine too. Okay. Uh, so these are the similar, what's that? It's a little, it's all right, there you go. We'll just adjust it. We're gonna be coming over here pretty soon. Uh, so what we're gonna do is to start off with this recipe, which is very, very simple, is we're gonna take these, uh, we're gonna take this coconut oil and we're gonna take the onions, we're gonna go over to the stove and we are going to saute them. And so that's what we're gonna do right now. We'll adjust this camera over here. All right. So Giada, you gonna take it over there, girl? All right. Why don't you put it right in there? Go ahead. Put those in. Wonderful. All right. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the coconut oil, put that in there. And then there you go. Why don't you just why don't you scrape that out since we've got nice clean hands? Beautiful. She's amazing in the kitchen, by the way. Absolutely amazing. All right, great. Now, Giada, what's your favorite thing to cook? Um, I like cooking with eggs a lot. Mmm, yum. That sounds so good. She makes a great omelet. A great omelet. All right. So what I've done is I've actually put on the onions and the coconut oil. Uh, we're going to saute them up till they become translucent. Are you going to stir? All right, why don't you stir? And I'm going to also add a little bit of salt into there. Beautiful. And so that's going to that's gonna cook for just about five minutes until uh, the onions are ready to go. Uh, and, and while the onions are cooking, I'm going to then add in some of that garlic. Uh, because what I find sometimes is if I add in the garlic with the onions, sometimes the garlic burns a little bit. So I want, uh, I want the onions to not cook as much. So I'll add them in about halfway through the cooking process of the onions. And what will happen is from there, we are going to do, we're gonna add in the, the cauliflower and the nut milk and the chicken broth. And we're gonna simmer that for about 10 minutes. So that's how we're gonna go about doing that. And you're doing amazing. You're doing really amazing. Good job, thank you. And so that's gonna be cooking up. And then what, what we're gonna go from there is we're also gonna make some protein balls uh, that are a really great dessert that you guys can, that you guys can utilize. Uh, and where are the, all right, over there, I'll make sure I've got everything. And I also have a, you have to have a, the good thing is you have to have a blender. You can also use a food processor, but we find that the blender actually works a lot better than a food processor when uh, blending the soup up. Uh, that's gonna be important. The other important thing whenever you're doing this soup is using cashews, raw cashews. Now that is where you get your creaminess from. Uh, and, and let me give you, uh, let me tell you a, a very brief story. Our neighbors, a little bit, come on Sarah and girl, you're doing great. Um, our neighbors uh, for a holiday party one time, they, uh, we brought over this cauliflower soup. And the, one of the, the, the husband, he goes, I don't eat cauliflower. And we're there like, well, we're the guests, so you have to try the cauliflower. And Nick, and so all of a sudden he goes, okay, give me a little bowl. So he takes a bowl, five bowls later, five bowls later, he looks over to his wife and he says, now why can't you cook like this? <laughs> and it was, but anybody that is even questioning cauliflower, I mean, you will be amazed by this. We have been on different cooking shows and, and at our retreats, 
And what we found is that everybody loves this cauliflower soup. Just, it, it's just amazing. Plus, we're gonna, I'll show you how to add different seasonings to it. All right. And I can vouch for this. I have tried the cauliflower soup from Craig and Jenny, and it is absolutely divine. And it goes with so many good things. Hey, Craig, you can actually put it with any meal as an appetizer, as a full meal. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So hold this recipe, you guys. You're going to want it for later. <laughs> yeah, we'll use this as a full meal sometimes. All right, we're going to add the garlic in. Oh, Gianna's going to add the garlic. She already knew what was going on. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Oh, yeah, you keep on stirring. You're doing great. You're great. I can smell it right now. Oh, it smells good in here. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, the the cauliflower soup. The kid just goes right. I mean, you can. You know, we have it as a meal sometimes. All the kids love it, and it's just so easy to do and to make. How's it going? How's it looking? Oh, it's looking pretty good. All right. All right. So now this is what we're gonna do. I'm going to turn the camera a little bit more this way. And Jada, would you mind doing me a favor? And can you put this wonderful bowl of cauliflower? So I've already chopped it up. It's all ready to go. Uh, and we just get a head of cauliflower. Now, if for some reason, if you can't find a head of cauliflower, uh, one of the, this is a little secret, uh, especially if you're getting organic, is frozen vegetables. Uh, depending on what you're using them for, if you buy it or fruits, if you buy them organic, they are even better than some of the organic stuff that you find right in your store. Because what ends up happening is that, oh, Jada, you want to put this in while I'm talking? A little bit? Yeah. All right, you want me to do it? Yeah. You got it? Yeah, you can put that all in there. Yep, yeah, just dump it in. Great job. Right, I'll take that. Good. And now, would you mind adding in the nut milk? Awesome. I'll take that. I'll be your sous chef. Now, can you take in the vegetable broth and can you put that in? Be careful with that. Amazing. All right. Put that in. Great job. All right, so stir that around a little bit. All right. So what I was saying in regards to the uh, frozen vegetables or fruits is you get your biggest nutrition burst whenever you pick them right off the vine or right from your garden. And if you were to, you know, as an example, they pick it wherever they are in the United States. That's why farmer's market is so good. You pick it anywhere in the United States and then they put it on a truck. And then that truck has to drive to your grocery store. And, it, it, and they, they normally pick it before it's actually ripe because it actually then ripens, as an example, with fruits in the truck. If you were to, then, then, then you get it and you take it home and you were, you're eating it and thinking, wow, this is amazing stuff. And it is, especially if it's organic, but it doesn't have as much nutrition as if, as weird as it may be, as if you got it frozen. Because from frozen, they actually get it right from the vine, they clean it, process it, and then they put it and they freeze it. And that's why it's so cool to actually get frozen fruits or vegetables, depending on what you're doing with them. Uh, and that's what we, a lot of times, will do uh, with our uh, with a cauliflower soup, is get that, uh, uh, get frozen cauliflower right from the store. All right, so let's, we're gonna then turn that on uh, a little medium high. We're gonna get that onto a boil and that's gonna take about 10 minutes. And then after that happens, then we're actually gonna blend it up. But wow, that is cooking for 10 minutes. We are going to work on, oh, we're gonna get you in there. Yeah. There you go. We are gonna work on our energy balls. Does that sound like a plan? Yeah. Okay, good. And if anybody has any questions, just shout out because I'd love to answer anything that you guys have. All right. So how about I do this? How about if I get you the ingredients this time? Does that sound like a plan? Okay. All right. There you go. You stay right there. There you go. All right. I'm going to turn this down, this camera down, so everybody can see all the ingredients. 
All right, go ahead. Tell them about tell them about the ingredients that are that are going in the lemon bowl. And they're the quick oats. So they're the super quick oats uh, that you put in there. And then you need to get a, uh, oh, go ahead. What is that? It's a vegan protein powder. All right. Whatever brand that you may want, but to get a vegan protein powder. All right. So we've got, we've got vanilla right here. Uh, as a matter of fact, we're out of chocolate. I know it's, that's because we're chocoholics over here. And so we are going to be putting the vanilla uh, protein powder in. And then, go ahead. We have um, dark chocolate, um, chocolate chip. All right, nice. And, and what's this stuff right here? Um, we're going to put in some maple syrup. There you go. It's organic maple syrup. You got out of the tree earlier this morning, right? Mm -hmm. No? <laughs> <laughs> All right, matter of fact, here we go. And then a lot of times we'll get all that out of there. We'll just scrape it out. Mmm. Oh, that's good. All right. Keep that in there. Oh, and then here you are. Yeah. And then you use an organic nut butter. And it can be any nut butter. You can use this right here. I'll hold this. I'll hold this while you can scrape it out. You can use any uh, nut butter that you'd like. Uh, today we have uh, peanut butter. A um, lot, most of the times we use almond butter, but the store has been a little low on some items out there. Uh, and we also make a uh, uh, we also make a deadly pecan butter too. That's good. Oh. Oh yes. Okay. Oh that. Wonderful. All right, now, would you like to mix that up? All right. Hmm. Look at her go. Oh, you're doing good. And the great thing about these energy balls is that you can add anything that you really want to it and experiment. That's the really cool thing about it. Now, I've done things, as an example, I just brought a few things over, but right here, I actually have some hemp seeds, great protein uh, that you can put in there. So, God is gonna put some hemp seeds in there. We just put a little bit. And then we also have, what are these things? Chia seeds. Chia seeds, that's right. So she's gonna put some chia seeds in there. Awesome. Okay. And how about while you keep on mixing that up, what if I, I forgot to get the pan out? How do I get the pan of the parchment paper? Does that sound like a plan? Mm -hmm. Okay. By the way, on Amazon, you can actually get parchment paper that's already pre-cut. That is just so cool. I mean, it is like, it's a, it's a godsend. It really is. So a lot of times, I mean, you can get any size that you want to. And it's for baking sheets, instead of having, you know, the roll, because a lot of times I tear it. And I'm one of those people that have this edge on that, you know, that doesn't, that's not so good. So it's already pre-cut parchment paper. That's a good tip. <laughs> How's that look? All right. Can we show everybody? Mm. All right. So that's one big ball, right? Are we gonna yeah. just are we, are we gonna just eat that one big ball? That's exactly right. We're gonna make some golf size balls, and you can make them a little bigger. You can make them a little smaller. However you want to. And after you do that, then what we do is we freeze them. Uh, now, you can eat them right away, but you, what we do is we freeze them, and then you can put them in a Ziploc bag and uh, pull them out whenever you want to uh, as, a, as a snack. So, you ready to go? Yeah. All right. Let's go for it. Wonderful. Yep. 
Just put it into a little ball and roll it around. I'll just show you, because it sticks together very well. If you need to form it just a little bit more, that's perfectly fine. Right. And there we are right there. So that's what it looks like, uh, nicely formed. Uh, what you can do also is, and we've done this, get some shredded coconuts, put it in a little bowl, and then dip those in the shredded coconut. And ooh, that's good too. So there's so many different things that you can do with these energy balls. Yeah, just to add to that, um, if you like to experiment with these type of energy balls, adding dates um, also make them really good and the stickiness makes them stick together well. Mm, yes, I love using dates, I love using dates. I made these already because I wanted to test out the recipe and I found these vegan, gluten-free, all natural marshmallows at Whole Foods. So I'm adding in these marshmallows into the center. So it's like a, a secret treat. Really? That's so, that's so cool. Just like the little ones. And they taste delicious. Okay. I think we'll be okay. We'll be okay. Because it's not like we're going to be cooking them. Then they're going to spread out. Mm -hmm. yeah. She does some amazing desserts too. Now the other thing, whenever um, whenever doing organic, um, I'll, I'll shout this out. Uh, we actually had a uh, another couple that they were uh, spending approximately fifteen hundred dollars a month on normal food, and then they went organic. And for most people, they're th you know you're thinking, wow, that's pretty expensive. And when you look at it initially, it can be expensive. Uh, what we found, though, in whenever you go organic, is you're getting more nutrition. Uh, whenever you get more nutrition, you eat less, right? You eat less. And whenever you eat less, that means you don't have to consume as much food. When you don't consume as much food, that means you don't actually, because I, how many times have you like ate something and it's like, wow, an hour later, you're still hungry? It's because it wasn't nutrient-dense food. You need to have good nutrient food to help you uh, to, and you don't get nutrients, not, you don't get it in the stomach, you actually get it whenever it hits the your intestinal tract. That's whenever the, oh, look at, see, I love that. There you go, <laughs> test it, I love it. There you go. Good job, boom. All right, we're gonna wash our hands at this point. Yeah, just to add to that, it kind of also relates back to how far your food's coming from. So like what you said with the frozen vegetables, um, when they take longer to ripen as they ripen in the truck and transported miles away, um, it's not as nutrient dense as like freshly picking it off of the vine or, or tree or whatever. So yeah, that's an excellent point. So now, so we have our, let's see, I'll show you guys. So now we have all of our energy balls. And at this point, what we're going to do is, uh, let's see, you put them, we'll put them in the freezer. Yeah, you'll put them in the freezer downstairs. All right, I'll open the door for you, okay? There you go. But they are a great snack. Um, they, uh, once again, you can do these in so many different ways and try different things out. But uh, they, uh, they're very healthy for you, especially since you're using the vegan protein powder. Um, you know, the all, and the reason why we use a vegan protein powder is whey. Um, I know some people probably, you know, that are watching use a ton of whey. And we just find that there's some more controversial stuff in regards to whey. So we kind of stay away from that. And we just stuck to a really a vegan protein powder. And uh, you can experiment a little bit. Some are more soy based, some are more pea, be uh, pea protein based. Uh, so it all depends on you know, what you like and, uh, and, your, and your taste. Here you go. Nice. All right. Now, 
All right. Good. Yeah, you're a great helper. Thank you. Okay. All right. So what? So tell me something, Giada. What kind of tips do you think that you can give? I see, I see some kids that are right there. All right. What kind of tips do you think that you could give uh, the people that are watching right now? Um, yeah. Oh. Yeah. What are we all, every single day? I mean, you have to have a, a what? A meal. A meal. A meal. Oh, a meal. That's good. <laughs> Meals always help. <laughs> but, you know, I know vegetables. And what's your favorite vegetable? Um, carrots. Yeah, she loves munching on carrots. All right. Uh, really cool um now so what uh so as the cauliflower is almost done could you give me a fork i just want to test the tenderness of it and also the carrots i like those are like more meat mm. that's it what kind of hummus is that um like lemon chia seed and you can make like beet hummus mm -hmm. sometimes just plain old hummus and the sun dried tomato hummus oh, yeah, yeah. Good. Hi, everybody. So now the cauliflower soup, uh, it is, uh, so it's been boiling for a little bit. I turned it down and it is, uh, so it's going to be ready to go. Uh, so I want to make sure that I didn't miss anything. Uh, so we've got everything in there. All right, awesome. So now this is the trick with the cauliflower soup. And it is about getting what we've already cooked in the pot, putting it into a blender, and uh, adding cashews to that to get it creamy. And they've gotta be raw cashews, all right? Uh, so raw cashews, perfect. So let's move the camera over this way. All right, we can see the blender. Can you see the blender? Yeah. Okay, all right, that's perfect. All right, you can see the blender. I will, what's that? Right here. Oh, we could do that too. All right, I like that. Look at that. All right, so we do that then. All right, perfect. Great. So let's take this off and don't put all the cashews in just yet. We actually are going to put some of the soup mix in and then we'll add some cashews and then we'll, we'll blend all that up and then we will redo that. Uh, so that's how we're gonna. That's how we're gonna do it. Now, one thing I did forget is one more pot, and I'm gonna get that right now. Okay. Because after we blend it, then we're going to put it in another pot as we're blending it away. Let's see. This one. Oh, if you could smell this right now. Oh, it just smells amazing. Ooh. It smells like that cauliflower thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's another another good thing. Uh is it, well, this is a little hot. So let me do the let me do the scooping on this one. Okay. And nutritional yeast, that's actually another great topping that we can utilize for, for this. So from here, we use a ladle and we will put in what we've already made in the pod, which is the cauliflower, the onions that we sauteed, the garlic, and the milk, along with the vegetable broth. All right, now, a lot of times I don't want to fill it up the whole way. I'll probably fill it up about halfway. Then I'll be able to do two of these and I'll, you know, all right, that looks really good. Now with half of the raw cashews in. There you go. That'll have one up. Perfect. Perfect. Now we're going to use the 
Yeah, we're going to put the lid on. Now, one of the things we're going to do is we are not going to hurt anybody's ears out there. Um, so we are going to mute this. And because it sounds like a lawnmower that's going to be happening. So we'll mute it and we'll come back in just a moment. All right, and with that, with a great mixer, it boom, it's done right away. So now we're done uh, with this, and then what I'll do is I'll end up pouring this into the other pot. Now I'm going to do that later for you guys, so I can show you some of the amazing things that we can do with this cauliflower soup. Yeah, and that once you get the seasonings. This, I'm going to move this right over here. Right. So now, here we go. So I'm going to pour this soup right in there. And you can see, even by the texture of it, as I'm pouring it out, and then it's just nice and creamy. Now, all right, so Giotto, what she's done is she is going to show you how to really spice up your cauliflower soup and how you can change it around every single time. And I will, um, and so you can eat your cauliflower soup plain, just the way it is, just like this. It is really amazing. Or you can add your spices to it. And I'll share a couple of my secrets after Giada shows all of her spices that she does. So go ahead, Giada, tell everybody the spices. So we have cold spray, cold on the smokehouse maple, brown sugar bourbon, hot garlic, and sweet and smoky. Mm. And those are some of the, the favorites. So as an example, what we'll do is, you know, let's just say that we're going to use some Old Bay and we'll sprinkle it right on top. And there's a couple things that you can do. Uh, number one is you can eat it just, this is, this is my little secret. There you go. All right, got that right there. Boom. All right. So this is my secret, which is going to be, I go layer by layer. I'll actually put on a seasoning and then I'll eat that layer of seasoning off of the cauliflower soup. And then I'll use another seasoning and I'll just, I'll, it'll, it'll be, I'll get about 10 layers deep of all these different seasonings that I end up putting on there. But this is how you can change your cauliflower soup every single day by adding a different seasoning. So you've got this base, which is just amazing all by itself, but then you add in whatever seasonings that you want. It doesn't matter. I mean, if you want to go add cumin, if you want to add anything that you can imagine, try it, experiment with it, and it's absolutely delicious. Um, and once again, you can make a huge bat batch of it. We will most times have three, four, maybe even five heads of cauliflower to make this soup, and then we'll freeze it so we can bring it out whenever we need to. Are you gonna taste it? You gonna be able to taste that? You can mix it up, yes. Craig, I do the same thing, and it's like having your appetizer cauliflower soup, and then you add in another spice, and it's like your dinner cauliflower soup, then you eat the top, it's, it's delicious. It's like your progressive, a progressive meal. Mm -hmm. And I found this, um, it's called truffle salt. 
It tastes amazing. If you guys haven't tried this yet, it's called truffle salt. Oh, truffle salt. Oh, yeah, I love oh, it. It is so good with a little cayenne on this. And, and sometimes if you actually want to, uh, it, you know, because we've got kids, uh, they don't, uh, what all of them don't like spiciness. But while you're sauteing your onions and your garlic, if you add some uh, red hot pepper flakes to that, that'll kick up the spice for the cauliflower soup. And it really tastes amazing. Mmm, I like the smell of that. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. 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 All right, go ahead. Make sure you blow on it. I don't want you to burn your tongue. Good. Nice. Look at this. Kid tested. He looks I'm like a gourmet kid. chef over there. <laughs> Nine-year-old Giada, I mean, it's like, you know, this is, you know, this is proof in the pudding right here. Whenever a nine-year-old says, listen, I love cauliflower soup. <laughs> That's a good sign. Uh -huh. So you add the seasonings every time you defrost the soup if you were to freeze it? Exactly. So you freeze it. Plain, okay. And then, yeah, you just, um, and that, that, that's it. And then, like I said, whatever seasonings you want to put on it, it and, and we will add, um, I mentioned this earlier, but nutritional yeast. Have you ever used nutritional mm. yeast? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I was just going to say, that makes it taste, it tastes so cheesy. It gives it like a cheesy cauliflower taste, but it's vegan. It does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I use this. Um, it's really good when mixing it with cashews. If you were to make a sort of cashew cheese or cashew dip. Um, mm -hmm. Adding a little bit of nutritional yeast is great for that. So I'll um, definitely try it with the soup. It sounds excellent. What we also do with cauliflower is uh, we'll make these cauliflower bites. Uh, we will, in a Ziploc bag, this is how simple it is. In a Ziploc bag, you put in your uh, cauliflower that you've already chopped up, and then you add in some avocado oil. You, you, you pour that in, and so it kind of, uh, so it's able to coat everything. Add in some salt, some pepper. If you want to put some red hot pepper flakes, you can. And then a ton of nutritional yeast. Shake it up in the bag. Put it on some parchment paper. Put it in the oven for 10 minutes. And it's amazing. That sounds so good. It's so simple. I mean, I, yeah. would, I, mean, I would just eat it. And, if, you, know, if, you know, my mother, you know, I didn't eat a lot of vegetables when I was a kid. So whenever she sees me now, she's like, who are you? <laughs> Does that make it kind of like um, buffalo cauliflower? And you can make a buffalo, yes, you can then add, it. so th th that's the beauty of it, is that you can add so much in. Oh, what do you got there? Bro? <laughs> oh, that's our bag of spices. Oh, yeah, we got all, we got so many spices. Oh, yeah, mm. that's awesome. I also, I like combining spices, too, to make your own blend, so mm -hmm. once you start cooking more and figuring out what you like taste-wise together, you can mix them up in their own little containers. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, very fun. A trick that I found that Jenny told me about, and I really wish she was here, uh, but you know, we'll get her, we'll, we'll do it another We'll time. have her on another one for sure. Exactly. You guys are like a dynamic duo. I mean, so if you, is doing amazing. <laughs> so if you were to like, as an example, um, see how to combine spice as well. Uh, if you were to uh, taste, uh, taste one spice and then smell the other one while the other spice is in your mouth, it is actually a great way of seeing if they mesh for you. So sometimes you don't have to mix them together. Um, so sometimes, you know, there may be uh, like garlic, taste a little bit of garlic powder and then uh, maybe use another, then smell another spice. And because your senses will all come together, you'll be like, oh, well that's, that actually, it works out really well and then you can you know, put it so just in case you want to put it in your soup and you're like oh this doesn't taste so good uh, but it's a good way of, of testing it out there she yeah. goes that's a really good tip mm -hmm. i'm gonna have to try that <laughs> mm -hmm. my sure. soup is just about ready to start mixing um but i started to make energy balls also and i didn't blend it yet but what I have is um, nut butter. I have a little bit of um, functional 
mushroom supplements. So that's like lion's mane, reishi, chaga root, or uh, chaga mushroom. And mm -hmm. then I put um, flax seeds and maple syrup also. So yeah, nice. super excited for those. Yeah, we have, we actually this is uh, the oddest thing. We know somebody over in uh, over in Singapore. He actually um, he's got a machine that somehow I don't know how it cuts the chia seeds in half. And because if you think about sometimes the the hemp uh, sometimes the seeds that we ingest, if they just go in whole, we it, it becomes fiber. It doesn't actually become as nutrition. So the, he has a machine and a founder process to cut the chia seeds in half so they absorb all the nutrients absorbing your body better. Oh. Yeah. Some soul cashews? Okay. That's all right. Nice. Craig, do you have a background in nutrition? Uh, no, I don't. Um, my, my, my background in nutrition is testing everything out, learning everything. I mean, it was... You know, it was a journey for uh, myself, uh, probably more than Jenny. And the reason why is that, I mean, truth be told, I grew up eating cheese and carbohydrates. Those were my, th those are the only food groups that I knew. I mean, because <laughs> that's what I, that's really all I did. And I really didn't even eat uh, much in the way of meat whenever I was younger. I just didn't really like it. And so it was always carbohydrates and cheese. As I, uh, as I grew up and I realized that I wanted to be healthier and it was anybody that is, uh, you know, we're about 95% vegan and, uh, and dairy free. And, uh, we, you know, we really are focused on, you know, getting the good stuff in our body because that's the energy, that's the fuel. Uh, because a lot of people, they don't, uh, add, add the, do the right energy for themselves. With the, with, the, with the proper food. So it started off years ago with trying a, a new recipe. And, oh, there you go. She's on, she, now look at this. This is what she's got going on now. She's got chips. All right, now she's dipping it in the cauliflower soup. See, that's all we needed. That's all we needed. Uh-huh, and that's what she'll do. Yeah. Um, so it started off by doing recipes uh, and trying them out, and all of a sudden we're like, wow, this tastes amazing. And wait a minute, it's it's vegan? And it's like, yeah, it is. And I was like, well, I really like that. Let's try something else. And so it wasn't an overnight process. It took actually a, a little bit of time uh, for us to convert ourselves. And once we did, and people ask us now, like I haven't had a hamburger in I don't know how many years. And people, they're like, well, I mean, don't you miss it? And it's like, no, I really don't miss it. I mean, it's, it's one of those things that once you, it's, it's mind over matter, it really is. And once you start feeling good, then that's where it's all going to come, come into play. Um, you know, a little secret that um, people don't know, uh, especially if they, if they do eat meat, that if you are, you, know, you, you normally have the three food groups, which you've got some carbo carbohydrate, you've got a vegetable, and then you've got an animal protein. And if you were to, uh, this is the American meal, have all three of them together, uh, especially animal proteins and, and carbohydrates. If you combine, if you eat carbohydrates and animal proteins, it takes 30% of your body to really process all that. And it takes up to five hours to digest it. And so all your body is doing is processing this food where if you were to just eat vegetables and carbohydrates or vegetables and an animal protein, then you would use only about 10% of your body's energy to really do that. Uh, and that's why so many people are tired. Uh, you know, they, they blame it on Thanksgiving on tryptophan, but it's really because you're adding all this stuff in there uh, because believe it or not, shrimp actually has more tryptophan than turkey does. Okay, I good. realized I was muted, <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah, that's a really good point. Like, especially with, once you start making the transition to a healthier lifestyle, 
it'll just come so much naturally. And maybe like the first three days or week or however, however long may be hard, but it's all about your mindset and it's all about mind over matter. So Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm on that journey too. So, um, it's, it's been really positive, but it definitely gets hard sometimes. And, um, once you focus on how good you feel by the way you eat, then it's easier to make healthier decisions. So I love that point that you both made. And if you guys haven't seen the movie Game Changers, it's such a good overview of just why a plant-based diet and what it does not only for your body, but for the economy and just, you know, sustainability. Um, Because you are what you eat and you'll find you have so much more energy and you won't crave those things. It's a process and it creates lasting lifestyle change. So don't feel like it has to be a quick fix, but um, it is absolutely delicious making vegan stuff. Um, I just wanted to show you guys what I'm doing with the protein balls. I did a plate full of um, hemp seeds and then just rolled the protein balls in hemp seeds. So they're like coated hemp seed balls. They're so good. I've been sampling them over here. (laughs) Chef's got to make sure it's good before they give it out, right? Of course. I also added a little bit of cinnamon to mine so you guys can spice them up or savory them up how you see fit. Yeah. Yeah, I am a big fan of like tasting as you go and adding what you think would be good in there. So make sure you're washing your hands, everyone. Disclaimer. <laughs> yeah. And see what John is doing. Not only does she dip her chips into the cauliflower soup, but now she's actually crumbling them into the soup. All right. So, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and you were mentioning cinnamon. This is something that uh, uh, we learned about two years ago, which I never knew. Uh, but there, as you, you're aware, there are multiple types of cinnamons out there. Most people, a lot of times, don't know that there are multiple cinnamons. It's like they just buy, hey, it's cinnamon. Uh, but the uh, what's that? You're gonna get it, okay? Uh, but what we found in regards, even if it's organic, uh, what we found is the uh, one of the cleanest cinnamons out there is Cylon cinnamon. Oh, okay. So it looks like it's spelled like this. Everybody. Yes, yes. Right. And so Cylon cinnamon, uh, you know, there's, there's good and there's bad with it. The good is that there are less toxins in the Cylon cinnamon uh, than, uh, than the other cinnamons out there. Uh, the only bad thing that I found is it does it doesn't have a huge cinnamon taste. Uh, it's not you know it's not uh, like uh, powerful like other cinnamons are. More like like a maca powder. Like it doesn't have any sweetness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh look at that. She's all. Look, you should see how much soup she's already consumed. <laughs> almost gone. Almost gone. And she had dinner already. Because it's so good. It's so good. How's everyone else doing? I see some a bunch of people cooking in the kitchen. Let's see. Well, I see that uh I see our family's there. So I see that Aunt Diane is there. We see that uh let's see, then uh Carol and Jim Markle, which are Jennifer's parents, uh they're absolutely amazing. And Aunt Debbie, she's there. I will tell you that I have, uh, I, I inherited with uh, Jenny an uh, absolutely amazing family. Uh, they are so cool. Uh, and, I'm, uh, and they're very supportive of everything that we do. Well, we're like giving virtual air hugs to everyone who's on here today. Yeah, big shout out to my family from Pennsylvania also being on here, 7 p or 8 p.m. now their time, so. Thanks for joining. Big shout out to my uncle Rick, who is so awesome and supportive, and my sister and my mom who are on here too. So good to see everyone is wanting to watch these videos and wants to learn more about nutrition. This has been super fun. And it's like we all get to cook and have dinner together virtually from our yeah. country. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like you may not be able to go into a restaurant right now and be around people, but we can all do Zoom calls and eat a meal together, which is a pretty right, wonderful so, thing. 
Yeah. All right, so take a look. So she actually finished her soup. <laughs> yes. Jennifer better hurry home. She's not going to get any. <laughs> <laughs> that's why. That's why I didn't. That's why I didn't blend the other one just yet. <laughs> <laughs> So I have to well, ask your daughter, what was her favorite spice that she put in? What was your favorite spice? Um, my favorite spice, I can't really tell the difference from the brown sugar version. I'm not sure which one's the real salt. Mm, okay, I think, I, I think it's, I think it's a smokehouse maple. I think that's a, that's a little bit more salt. Oh, we got okay. chunks of salt in there. Okay, it's a little more. It's more yeah. coarse. Okay. All right. Nice. Oh, yeah. That's good. Now she's dipping the raw cashews into it. Oh. Cool. <laughs> good move. Mm. It's like a hummus soup. Uh, yes. Yes. Like a fresh loaf of sourdough bread with pesto or olive oil, dip in that. Amazing. Ooh, yeah. So good. And that's the thing. Yes. Once you start, you know, you know, we were you know, because we we're you know on the show and doing this. Um, you know, it, uh, you know, and we're combining a couple of different things. But overall, making that soup, you know, I, 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 let me take a step back. One of the Making the soup is very easy. The hardest thing that I find with uh, vegetables is having uh, is cutting them up. That's the hardest mm -hmm. thing. So what we do is actually at on Sunday we will cut up all the vegetables for the week. So we'll spend an hour or two hours cutting the vegetables, and that way you um, you've already got it taken care of. Because I, I do find that is the hardest part. Uh, especially from maybe you know, rushing around. Um, so just, uh, so that's a little secret. Cut up the vegetables on Sunday and you've got them for the rest of the week. Uh, you probably could, as a matter of fact. I mean, your, your imagination can go anywhere that you want to. You know. so. But it, and it is, and would you say it is creamy, Giada? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it, and it's really those raw cashews that make it creamy. Um, so that's why you don't have to add in heavy cream uh, like you know the restaurants do whenever you're going out. Um, you can just that's where the cashews come in. But you got to use raw yeah. ones. Creamy with the raw cashews. Mm -hmm. Yes. Cashews are really awesome in a lot of different things. Um, if you are using them in desserts, I find that it's sometimes easier to soak them if you have time. Um, yes. A lot of times I, I don't soak them and it still mm -hmm. turns out fine because well, I'm, I'm very spontaneous. <laughs> but right. It breaks those enzymes down, yes. Yeah, it breaks the enzymes down so it makes it easier for your body to digest it and it gives your food a little more creamier um, texture. So just a little tip there too, mm -hmm. but yeah, um, I think we can just about wrap up now. So thank you both so much for guest hosting this week. This was so fun and I would love to have you both back on again. Um, yeah. I think yeah, everyone here awesome. learned so much. Yeah. We'll get Jenny um, on too and then we'll, uh, then we'll really have a party. This yeah. smells amazing. Yeah. Hope you guys had fun. Yeah, we did. We had a blast. Everyone. Did you have a blast? There you go. Cool. All right. Great. Cool. Awesome. I posted a link to um, eatsparkcity.org. Um, I'm the education coordinator for Eats, and I do virtual cooking classes like this and cooking with kids in school districts. Um, and we have a lot of really cool blog posts and articles and things going on on our website. So um, for everyone that's on here, feel free to check it out. And I hope to see everyone next week. So thank you all. Have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.